Hi, everyone, and happy Monday. Welcome to today's episode of the Northern Kentucky Spotlight Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Brookbank. Today, we're going to be joined by Carla Boldry. She is the Cincinnati Market Manager for La Mega Media. La Mega Media is one of the largest Hispanic media companies in the Midwest, and they're the largest in Ohio. It's a great conversation. She has some really great insights into the industry and the growing Hispanic population of Northern Kentucky. I just want to talk to everyone about eggs and issues. Our next edition is Tuesday, March 8th, and we'll focus on the bourbon business in Kentucky. Join us for an update on the Beeline, the collection of craft distilleries, bourbon bars, and bourbon-centric restaurants that is Northern Kentucky's Bourbon Trail. Learn more about how the Beeline contributes to community and statewide placemaking, as well as the industry's economic impact. Did you know that being a Northern Kentucky Chamber member can save you money? I'm sure that you've heard that line before, but you can save money by gaining access to resources that will help your business run more efficiently while improving your bottom line. Reduce daily expenses, manage operations more efficiently, and keep your business going through the Northern Kentucky's cost-saving partnerships. You can learn more about those affinity programs at nkychamber.com under the Save Money tab. Now, let's meet our members of the week and join Carla. CBG Airport is the lowest fare airport in the tri-state region with 54 non-stop flights and direct international service to seven destinations, including Paris, France, and now home to both DHLs and Amazon's global cargo hubs. The airport is furthering its position as leader in aviation and is deeply committed to being an economic driver for the community. You can learn more and start your next adventure at CBGAirport.com. Ranking on Google Search and Maps is easy to understand, but hard to do. It requires constant effort and attention, uploading new photos, responding to Google reviews, writing weekly posts, and checking suggested updates. Google listing optimization takes experience and time, and there are no shortcuts. C-Crew gives your Google My Business account the steady, consistent attention it needs to be effective, optimizing, updating, and expanding critical content every single week. From local retail stores to large regional networks, C-Crew generates content, establishes benchmarks, and creates dramatic measurable increases in engagement. So what can C-Crew do for your business? More calls, more clicks, more clients. Congratulations to our members of the week. You can learn more about these businesses by following the Northern Kentucky Chamber on social media where we will highlight one of these businesses each day. Now, let's meet our members of the week. Josh McIntosh is a criminal defense attorney who specializes in all areas of criminal and DUI law. Seeker Consulting is a digital marketing agency that brings the fun and excitement back to digital marketing. Paragon, established in 1975, is a full service agency that specializes primarily in radio and TV. Executive Transportation Services is the premier ground transportation company in the greater Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky area. Kristen Zabo is a career coach and the best-selling author of Job Joy, your guide to success, meaning, and happiness in your career. Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Northern Kentucky Spotlight Podcast. I'm here with Carla Boldry. She is the Cincinnati Market Manager for La Mega Media. Carla, thank you for joining us today. Hi, Sarah, and hi, everybody that is joining us today for this podcast. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Yes, of course. It's awesome um, to have you so we can talk about La Mega Media. You guys are a really cool company. So tell me a bit about your organization. Absolutely, Sarah. La Mega Media is the largest Hispanic media company in the state of Ohio. Uh, We actually have been uh, in the region for over 15 years. Uh, It used to be called TSA Media uh, before, and it actually uh, went through an acquisition process within three years ago, which it was actually the time that I joined the team. Uh, Their top sales executive, Claudia de Leon, uh, had the opportunity to acquire the company. Uh, So she did, and it actually became a Hispanic-owned business. Uh, we are uh, we have radio stations in Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati. We have a print publication that goes through those markets and also Pittsburgh. Um, and uh, we also reach the, the Northern Kentucky area. Um, we we definitely strive to be the connection uh, with the Hispanic community through our 
all, all our products and services. Yeah. And that's a really unique organization. Like you said, you guys are the biggest one in Ohio. So you guys have a huge reach. You touch a lot of lives. Um, what's your company's vision? We really, like I said before, one of the things that we're looking into is to be the trusted connection uh, with the Hispanic population. Uh, as, as you know, and data shows that uh, Hispanic is the um, part of the population that is growing the fastest. So we definitely, uh, we wanna be connected to the community and be that trusted partner you know, from both sides, both from the Hispanic community uh, to mainstream. Yeah, and when you think about the growing diversity of the region, you mentioned the Hispanic population is growing exponentially. We have a lot of people coming into the region. What's something that you think other businesses should consider when they're trying to get in contact and reach that part of the population? So one of the things that um, has been part of the narrative is that we are so small, so small that for some people, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I do think that right now is the right time to start thinking about how to reach uh, diverse populations, uh, especially with the growing Hispanic community. Uh, so really, the, I, I believe that the biggest barrier for companies to do it is that they do not know how. And that's how companies like us that not only uh, we look like it, we sound like it, and we are part of that community, are able to really help our companies that are trying to connect with the Hispanic community. So we want to, we want to be that bridge. We want to be that connection. Yeah, that's a really incredible resource that you guys offer, uh, not just to the business community, but to your audiences. You know, you, like I mentioned, you guys reach so many people. How can businesses in Northern Kentucky uh, get in contact with your company and how can they reach out to you guys and get involved? Absolutely. They can reach us out through our website, lamegamedia.com. I'm, I'm already starting to speak Spanish. How about that? <laughs> at lamegamedia.com, or they can reach at me personally, kbaldry at lamegamedia.com. I can tell you I'm also everywhere in social media. So if you see me, don't hesitate. You can reach out to me, LinkedIn, Facebook. I am always available uh, to have a conversation, uh, to try to give you, you know, ideas and uh, trying to become a solution for you to, to get connected with the community. Yeah, and you uh, you mentioned you're all over on social media, but you're also extremely involved in the business community across Greater Cincinnati. Uh, talk about your passion for that. You have a history of helping other businesses in the community. Absolutely, Sarah, and that 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 gets me all excited. It's actually the fact how I got connected to La Mega Media over ten years ago. I have been a, a business coach for over 13 years uh, with organizations like the Small Business Development Centers at Miami University Regionals, uh, the Urban League, and other organizations that have been really connected to try to develop business growth. So I always say amongst all the things that I do, there's always a common denominator for me, and that is to grow small businesses, specifically minority-owned businesses, women-owned businesses and Hispanic-owned businesses and probably in that order. So definitely anything that touches those areas is something that I wanna be connected and that I want to help out in any way I can. And definitely, you know, it used to be that I did all my work on the other side of the river and I have been a Northern Kentucky resident since I came to the United States. So definitely part of my strategy is to bring that knowledge, to bring what I know to this side of the river and continue growing the um, positive impact with companies, you know, within our region. So definitely when, when um, you know, kind of the opportunity came together, not only I was gonna continue to help small businesses, but now I can do it in a capacity that I'm really connected with those that are within my community. So uh, needless to say, I work a lot, but I have a lot of fun doing so. 
Yeah, you are so involved. One of the coolest things um, that I think that you do, um, the Latina Entrepreneur Academy, that is such an incredible program that you founded. Can you tell us a bit about that? Absolutely. So when um, this actually came about in 2017, uh, through a small grants program um, by LULAC, the League of United Latin American Citizens, which at the time uh, was part of my community outreach uh, that I was doing. So uh, they started this program and actually Cincinnati, the Cincinnati region has been the only region that has made it become a standalone program. So we just finished our fifth year. Um, this is a summer boot camp where we get uh, Latinas to learn how to start, run, and grow their own business. Uh, it is my most ultimate passion. I love every second of it. Um, not only from the standpoint of people actually starting their own business, but um, what I did learn you know, now after five years is the economic empowerment. So many women are out there just trying to make it happen. And for many of them, entrepreneurship is the answer. So definitely once you are getting connected to them, you're giving them, you know, all the, all the knowledge and all the information that they need to, and especially the little push in the back to say you can do it, it makes a whole lot of difference. So, you know, from over 100 um, Latinas that have come through the program, there's over 45 businesses that are up and running. And, and, you know, not only we want to be that educational program for them, but we're building a network connection for them so that they can thrive within their own business and do business with each other and grow with, within the community. Yeah, that's incredible. And you said you've been doing it for five years since 2017. What have you seen in that community uh, in terms of growth? Like how has that been? How has it been impactful for you? And how has it been impactful for the region? So definitely I see a lot of uh, determination, a lot of change probably uh, as people start, as the population grows, as you see more and more small businesses pop up um, everywhere, uh, people definitely uh, stop thinking that maybe uh, starting a business is not for them, right? Uh, they're starting to feel inspired by others and therefore you start seeing more people, um, you know, taking charge and, and, and getting started. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great for me. I will tell you, I've been in the area for 24 years. Uh, when I got here, I thought I was the only Hispanic person like within an 80 mile radius. And today I, I cannot go anywhere where I cannot hear somebody that's actually speaking Spanish. So to me, it's like really, really exciting. Um, you know, I love this area. I love Northern Kentucky. Uh, I made it my home. I've been here for 25 years. I have family here. And, and definitely now being this growth within the Hispanic community uh, helps my sense of belonging of, of this place and making it a greater place with the work that I do. Yeah, that's incredible. And then when you think about the growth of the community that you're in and the business community, which you've also seen growth in and been very involved in, what are ways... And I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase this question. Um, how are those connected? How can businesses uh, really like embrace that? How can they find those connections uh, just naturally? Maybe not through businesses, maybe through getting involved. How can they kind of, you know, access that? I see that as a great challenge. And that's a great question because, uh, you know, the way, the way, uh, in general, Hispanic businesses do, and we see a lot of maybe professional services, retail, food and accommodation, right? The way they do business is very different how uh, regular mainstream businesses do. Uh, I cannot tell you for the 13 years that I've been in this position, uh, how many times I have tried to convince many of these businesses to attend networking meetings. It does not work. So the way they do business is just differently and is very challenging, uh, as you said, for 
both to converge. So I think it is important for organizations like the chamber, uh, like the academy, to make it intentional to be able to make those connections, uh, to try to test different ways on how to get these people together so that they can start building those connections that do not happen naturally. Uh, because everybody starts going into their own little pocket. Uh, so we need, to, we need to start pushing those pockets together. And I will tell you, uh, I, I have been highly impressed uh, with with the intentionality for the Northern Kentucky Chamber and trying to shift into making those connections to diverse companies. So, and you know, I, I like it. Just even starting the conversation makes the change. Um, now doing things, uh, implementing change uh, definitely will result, maybe not right away, but I can definitely see that that will, that will happen. Yeah, I think it's really interesting the words that you chose. So one of the upcoming chamber events that's really exciting is intentionally building diverse connections. Um, and that's a really powerful idea, this idea that there's maybe just a difference in ways that people do things from different cultures and bringing those groups together, like you said, to intentionally make connections, to build those relationships and to get those started. I think that's a really important thing when we talk about um, all sorts of diversity and equity as those conversations continue, especially in the business community. So thank you for bringing that up. I think that's a really great point. Absolutely. And and definitely, like I said, um, I, I have been, even though most of my work has been, you know, in the Cincinnati area and just because of the, 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 the market that I um, have been catering to, uh, just knowing that the conversations are happening in Northern Kentucky, and it's not just a conversation, but things are happening. Uh, definitely, I, I am really excited. I'm even more excited to be part of that. And, and trying to help with the little that I know and this somewhat people that I'm connected to, uh, to make sure that we can drive that change. And, and you know, it, 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 it really is good business. Um, it, it really, you know, uh, there, there's, there's nowhere that they can tell you that just, you know, making intentional diverse connections is not going to help your, your bottom line. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Well, Carla, thank you so much for joining us today. Before I let you go, is there anything else that you would like to tell our podcast guests? No. Well, uh, I thank all of you for listening to us. Uh, definitely uh, don't wait. Don't put it in the back burner. Uh, don't think it is too small or not important. Uh, make sure that you start thinking about, you know, how are you uh, connecting with the Hispanic community? and why is this important to you, and let us help you. Uh, you can always reach out to me, uh, Carla Voldry, at kvoldry at lamegamedia.com. All right, well, Carla, thank you again so much for joining us. This is a great conversation. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you to the Northern Kentucky Chamber for keeping us up to date. <laughs> We're happy to have you. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, I'm Shannon Schumacher, Account Executive, Kentucky Market Leader. At Haran, we champion bold innovation to help employers and individuals thrive. As an industry thought leader, we explore new horizons in healthcare, benefits, employee engagement, and wellness. We work harder to deliver all the strategic benefits, planning, and execution you expect from a true partner. And we do it with laser focus on your short and long-term outcomes to help manage your benefits while improving your employee experience. So Heartland is celebrating its 110th anniversary this year. Recently, we partnered with the Kinkle family and the Fisher family in Northern Kentucky, Boone, Kenton, and Campbell counties. And we have three uh, offices there to serve the Northern Kentucky region. Just remember when the economy heats up, come see us at Heartland Bank where banking really feels good. Come on over to Heartland, where banking feels good.
Hi, everyone. Thanks again for joining me today on the podcast. I hope you liked that conversation with Carla. I really hope you took something away from that that you can use for your business and in your community. Don't hesitate to reach out to her. I know that she'll be able to help you if you have any questions. Like we mentioned in that conversation, the idea of intentionally building those diverse connections is very important, which is why the Northern Kentucky Chamber of Commerce will be hosting Intentionally Building Diverse Connections later this month. That event, powered by Fifth Third Bank, will be on Thursday, March 3rd, from 4 to 6.30 p.m. at the Hilton Cincinnati Airport. It's kind of a last minute thing. I know it happens this week, so if you have not registered for that event, please go to nkychamber.com and register now. Thanks again for joining me today, and I will see you all next week. 